Fern Hickson is a retired teacher in New Zealand who helped set up Resist Gender Education. She is opposed to themes in the Ministry of Education, Relationship and Sexuality curriculum that teach children it is possible, easy and admirable to change sex. Hello, I'm Fern from Nelson in New Zealand. I'm a retired teacher and I'm also um, a feminist from the 1970s <clears throat> and um, so I first got involved um, when I when I realised that men were invading women's sports and I uh, couldn't believe my eyes. The more I looked, the more I couldn't believe my eyes. Um, <clears throat> and as a teacher, I'm especially concerned with what's happening in schools, what children are being taught and helped to set up um, resisting education last year and create the website. Um, and that's where a lot of my focus is, although I probably support all the other things that are happening. This is a huge fight. It's multifaceted, and um, we all just need to pitch in however we can. So my talk tonight is about um, my uh, win with the Media Council last year, and it's intended to encourage everyone to make use of our regulatory bodies. Um, it's very time-consuming, quite tedious, and while you're doing it, you feel, you know, that you're probably just wasting your time. But I hope this story will encourage others to, uh, if you've got somewhere to complain, actually go and complain. <clears throat> so this is what happened last year. Um, the Child and Adolescent Therapists Association organised the conference in August very bravely. Um, this is the first time that any gender critical conference had been proposed for New Zealand. And we've had a complete media blackout absolutely 100% media blackout up until very recently um, <clears throat> and on any gender critical views. So this was a big deal for us um, and it caused an immediate backlash. Um, there was an online pet petition that gathered thousands of signatures within you know a couple of days and the main New Zealand news source stuff which is a private company, but it owns the majority of New Zealand's newspapers and it has an online news site, which is, I think, the most popular one in New Zealand. They published a hit piece against the conference. <clears throat> and I'm now going to share my screen. And I, I couldn't get a good um, shot of the whole um, report, but I hope hopefully what I've got is enough that you'll, um, you'll get the idea. The two headline speakers for the conference were Stella O'Malley and Dr. Diana Kenny. Um, she's a psychologist, a professor of psychology from Sydney, I think. Um, and I was only speaking later in a, on a panel um, uh, representing resist gender education. <clears throat> so um, my my name was, you know, should have been right down the list. But in this story, I was the only conference speaker who was named. And I was described as a detransitioner, which I think is terrible misgendering and can't believe that they aren't ashamed of themselves for it. So because I was the only one who was named, um, I was my name was linked with the criticism that the conference was outrageous, wrong, mind-blowing and upsetting and spreading fear and misinformation. And at the time, I was still working as a teacher, so... Um, that was concerning that my name was being sullied like that. Uh, plus, I live in Nelson where the conference was to be held. And this was the Nelson newspaper it was all published in. So it was all very, um, you know, I've had my name dragged through the mud in, in my small town. It's only 50,000 people. So, you know, a lot of people saw all of this written about me. Uh, I immediately emailed the reporter to ask for the false description to be corrected. And they did change the online story straight away, but the the printed version went out the next day with the detransition line and still in there. Uh, no public apology for the area was forthcoming. I did get a uh, personal email apology, but not one in public. And they made a correction in the next issue of the Nelson Mail on the 13th of June, which didn't make it clear that I was not a detransitioner, de it just said that I was a teacher. So this lack of clarity or apology in the correction was the first part of my complaint to the Media Council. For the next few days, I exchanged emails with the editor of the Nelson Mail, 
And she agreed that I could submit, submit an opinion piece explaining my reasons for speaking at the conference. I supplied two carefully referenced pieces and they were both rejected. They said they were pejorative and prejudiced. And they didn't seem to care that they'd been pejorative and prejudiced to me, but, you know, they, they just decided they wouldn't publish it. So the refusal to provide me with a right of reply was the second part of my complaint. And the third part of my complaint was the lack of balance and accuracy in the article, as well as Stuff's long-standing biased reportage on transgender topics. So I did an audit of Stuff's coverage of transgender issues from January 2020 to June 2022. In that 30-month period, Stuff had reported at least 58 times from a transgender supportive perspective, and only once from a perspective that questioned transgender beliefs. None of the negative side effects of transitioning, lifelong medication, loss of sexual function, possible sterility, were ever canvassed in any of Stuff's reportage. I sent my complaint to the Media Council on the 25th of July. It was seven pages long and it had five supporting documents attached. It probably took me more than 20 hours of work to put it all together. And at the time, I wondered if, it, wondered if it was all worth it, but my sense of justice and anger just kept me going. In the meantime, the conference went ahead very successfully, but it had to be held in a secret location and mainly by video after personal threats were made to the conference organisers and someone threatened to burn down the original venue. In response to my complaint, um, so you send your complaint to the media council, then they send it to the um, media organisation organization you're complaining about, and staff replied saying, firstly, that they had apologised for misdescribing me as soon as was possible. Secondly, that they were under no obligation to print anything as a right of reply, and that... Um, they won't publish voices who deny the very existence of other New Zealanders in harmful and prejudicial ways. And so this here is um, <clears throat> taken from staff's re response, what they sent to the Media Council. They also compared their position on transgender issues to their position on climate change. <clears throat> so they don't include comment from climate change deniers to provide balance in the newspaper. And similarly, they say they don't report the, quote, harmful views of people who don't believe homose homosexuality should exist at all. And both of these arguments are complete straw man arguments because never once have I said that uh, homosexuality should not exist or denied that there are transgender people. I don't think those things, and so therefore I couldn't possibly have said those things. They just made them up to make, you know, um, paint a black picture, you know, make me look terrible. So the New Zealand Media Council is funded by the media industry and it has 14 members on its board. Um, at the moment, there are senior journalists, representatives from publishers, independent consultants, public representatives, a retired judge, a university lecturer and a lawyer. These are all senior professional people and they're well connected throughout New Zealand society. I'm not sure how they get appointed. Um, probably there's an election process, but I'm not sure about that. So any complaints sent to them are considered by a subgroup of the 14, and in my case, there were 10 who considered the complaint. It took the council four months to publish their decision. I was told that my complaint had prompted long and detailed discussion between the council members, hence the delay. My complaint was only partially upheld, and for the first few days after receiving the ruling, I felt disappointed. But after thinking about it, I realised that the council ruling was actually as good as could, I could have hoped for. The council is not able to direct its members to do anything. Uh, it can only suggest or tell them they've done something wrong, but it can't actually make them do anything. So in this particular ruling, they have, um, they can't tell them what to do, but they've given them a big nudge in the right direction. My complaint about the inadequate 
apology was upheld. The complaint about staff's refusal, refusal to publish my opinion um, piece was denied. Now I'm just finding this here. The complaint about staff's refusal to publish my opinion was denied um, because staff is a privately owned company. Of course, they do have the right to make their own editorial decisions. And the media council did note my complaint, my claim of heavy bias in staff's reportage, um, but they said that they didn't have the resources to investigate it. So they didn't deny the bias. Um, they left that question open. So that was good. But finally, and most significantly, the council ruled that coverage of the debate about the treatment of gender dysphoria in children and climate change reportage is not the same. Um, and this is what they said, quote, this is a sensitive, complicated and important topic where there appears to be evolving scientific debate. The council rejects Stuff's argument that it is analogous to climate change. In the case of climate change, there is an overwhelming consensus of scientific opinion. Whereas on the issue of childhood gender dysphoria, there seems to be a variety of genuinely held and differing opinions internationally. So that's a significant win. And then the council went on to ask for all media organizations to be you know, in more, uh, I think more carefully about providing balance. The council hopes staff and other media outlets will consider whether they are taking a balanced approach overall. It is important that all reasonable views are allowed to be heard, given the seriousness of the matters under consideration. Uh, and the council trusts that staff and other media outlets will keep a watching brief on developments in this area and cover it in a balanced manner. So overall, it was worthwhile to make the complaint because now we have 10 senior professionals who have debated the issue and come to the conclusion that transgender ideology is worth discussing, particularly in reference to children. And New Zealand news media have been put on notice to keep a watching brief on developments and cover it in a balanced manner. So I hope the success of this complaint will encourage others to keep pursuing similar complaints uh, in all your regulatory bodies and um, we'll keep going until our voices are finally heard. Thank you.